My name is Derek Zan. I'm from South Texas, and I love food. We might review a chain once in a while, but we really prefer locally owned eateries that bring their own unique styles of culinary delight and fun to the RGB. With my darling wife. It tastes like Fruit Loops. And some extraordinary friends and family. A place to make a good steak can cook anything. Yeah. He's a uh, sriracha shrimp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna warn you all now, my beard is gonna catch everything in my mouth, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll find all the deliciousness the Valley has to offer and share it with you. So get your taste buds ready because this is Valley Food. Hey guys, Derek Zan here with Valley Food Review and I am in San Antonio, Texas at B&B Smokehouse at the first official travel edition. Now, we're doing travel editions because we have a lot of different kinds of foods in South Texas, so we have a very particular spoiled palate, I would like to say. And uh, we wanted to kind of take that palate on the road and see what other cities have to offer. Now, today we're here at B&B Smokehouse in San Antonio because we've heard great things about the place. They have amazing reviews, and they recently remodeled the place just this last year. And on today's episode, we have a special treat for you guys. We have guest Jonathan Joss, who's going to be joining us and eating some barbecue. You might know him as the voice of John Redcorn from King of the Hill or Denali on Magnificent Seven. He's been in a host of other movies, and uh, he's got quite an impressive uh, career behind him, so and in front of him, I'm sure. So we're going to have a chance to sit down, talk with him, have some barbecue, and have a good time. So let's go in and check it out. I'm here with Jonathan Joss, the man himself. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. All right, where are we at? We're at b, &B Smokehouse on the south side of San Antonio, man. When you want magnificent barbecue, when you want to feel like you're eating from the king of the pit, man, you know, you got to come to b, &B Smokehouse. And you know what? Just walking into this place, I've already gotten to meet some of the people involved in this, and they made us feel like we were at home. And that's before we even got to the menu. So let's get to the menu and get some food. Let's get to the menu, get some food, have some drinks, and let's talk about south side San Antonio and great barbecue. All right, let's do it. I would suggest a barbecue plate, and that comes with two sides. You can either get a single meat, the ranch hand plate has two meats, and then there's the three meat plate. Ooh. If you're hungry, yes. I'll take all of that. Okay. I'll take it. Perfect. Okay. And whatever. I mean, and then the biggest. We'll share it all and order whatever you want. I mean, at the menu, get a beer, you know. Oh, we're there. Now you're talking. We're there. Yeah. We're there. <laughs> and, and you're going to find out who this wonderful woman is in, in a little bit. You'll be surprised. Yeah. And then on the sides, I'm all about the food here. The, are the the big sellers are the potato salad and the cream corn. Ooh, and I'm all about the really corn. Really good one is the coleslaw. It's not too sweet. It's just perfect. I'm a potato salad fan, so I'm gonna have to get some of that. Get that. Okay. And You're the getting the three corn. plate. I'm getting the three plate. And right. I think. And don't that, forget, it's homemade. It. Homemade. Of course. Right here. Here on the homemade. south side of San Antonio. Everything's yeah. made homemade here. Yes. Wow. The cream corn is not out of a can. Not out of a can. No. You have it in a box? No. It's not out of a box? Right now it's in a big pot. <laughs> it's, it, it's out of the farm, out of the field. Okay, don't forget the uh, fried pickles with the beer. Oh, okay. All right. I'm doing that. Yes. Okay. I'm doing that. All right, we're on it. All right. Shall we? So it's a three, tell me that one more time. A three. Okay. You can get the three meat, three meat and you can choose from brisket, barbecue chicken, sausage, smoked turkey, pulled pork, and then if you want a rib, it costs a little bit extra. Oh, all sounds so good. But it's worth it. The it's beef ribs it. are brontosaurus ribs. Ooh, brisket chicken beef ribs. Yes, let's do that. That's it. That's perfect. We got it. Now you have to get, you have to choose your brisket on our guide. Oh, fat and juicy leaning me. Oh, fat and juicy oh with a little bit of, <laughs> of the bark for yes. crunch feel. You got it down to an art now, don't you? Do. I'll leave it up to the server. I'll let them yes. do it like that. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, we had a recommendation of something to order, and it was a three meat, I believe it was. Uh, Fantastic. And uh, she recommended the brisket. The was it the chicken? Yes. Or the turkey chicken. The right? chicken. Chicken breast and, and uh, beef ribs. How do you take it? Half and half? half, and half? Let's do it. Excellent, okay. excellent. And what are you drinking and there? I'm having a Michelob Ultra because I'm watching my weight. Ah, uh, you know, is that a local IPA? Carbot? It is, isn't it? I'll take one of those. And Yuppie. <laughs> hey, I support local too. <laughs> Potato salad, please. Yes. Um, cream corn. Anything else, gentlemen? Yes, I will have the three plate combo as well. I'd like to have the brisket, bark at me, and I would like to have the pork ribs, and I will also have the turkey. I would like to have cream corn, and do you have onion rings? Okay, give me an appetizer of onion rings, please. And give me cream corn and uh, french fries. That'll be it. Okay. All right. This is where the guy leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I pull out the wallet. Okay guys, so we got our food. Uh, this looks really, really good. And uh, we're gonna dig in and tell you what we think of the B&B Smokehouse here in San Antonio, Texas. First of all, I'm here with uh, Jonathan Joss. Uh, once again, he's, he was the voice of uh, John Redcorn from King of the Hill. He was Denali and Magnificent Seven. Uh, been in a lot of things, actually. I saw your IMDb. It's, it's an impressive list. Yes. But uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. For now, let's focus on B&B. What do you hey, say? I, I know what I'm gonna get. I hope you enjoy it. Dive it in. Thanks for the recommendation. Folks. Yes, sir. Oh my god. I'm starting here with my turkey. I'm gonna try the chicken. Oh man. Oh god. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay, so I'm getting that overwhelming smoky flavor, which is really, really good. I can't I can't pin it down though. I don't know if it's uh, oak or mesquite. I think it might be a combination, to be honest with you. It's tree. Tree. That's it. I knew it was something like that. It's also got a very sweet flavor. Nice, tender, and juicy on the inside, and crisp on the outside. Look at that, it's just falling apart. I'm showing off about his chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show off about my turkey. <laughs> Not many people have turkey breast. For me, as you can tell, it's been smoked through. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of char, nice little rub on the outside. Um, dip, just a slightly dip in the barbecue. I don't want to cover up that nice, sweet turkey flavor. I can eat probably two turkeys to your one chicken. You got the bones over there and stuff. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have a hard time speaking during this one. I got the onion rings on the side. Very, very crispy. Oh. Moist turkey, crispy mm. onion rings. No, I'm not gonna cut this piece. <laughs> You know what, the barbecue sauce, I'm curious about that. Mm. What do you think about the barbecue sauce here? Now, everything made here is made in-house. Yeah, we did We did know. So, everything not, made fresh, made here. Not too sweet, not too vinegary. I like it. Oh yeah. But, I think the food is so good, you don't need sauce. Mm. It's very light. Yep. Now, I'm gonna dive into the brisket. By all means. This is Texas. Have you, you guys, have a place have have you guys ever been to a barbecue place where you have the sauce and it just tastes bottled? And it tastes like a, like a prefabricated, bland, ordinary barbecue sauce? Definitely not the case here. This is amazing. It's got a very light flavor, but it has a little kick at the end, which I really like. I'm noticing an overall tone of things here, and it's sweet and smoky. 
if I had to use two words to describe what I'm eating so far, it would be sweet and smoky. Now, brisket impressions. Don't do an impression of brisket. I mean, what are your impressions of the brisket? Can't talk eating some of the best brisket I've ever had. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not even going for the sauce, guys. I'm not going for the sauce at all. There's no need to go for the sauce. And that the sauce is bad, the sauce is good. But right now, I don't need the sauce. I'm going sauceless. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's brisket cooked right. Uh-huh. Falls apart in the mouth. Here we go. Oh man. Oh. I'm still going for the brisket again. And now, <laughs> there's a great place about it. Did you notice on the wall, you can order your brisket like different ways. Lean and mean, juicy. I like it bark. When I order it, I say bark at me. Because this is what I want. <laughs> I heard you say that. Yeah, man. I want my brisket to bark at me. Woo, woo, look at that. Yep. Look at that. Sure nice is. little bark on there. You know, a little uh, 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 chicharron flavor right there at the end. Like, you can see the smoke ring in there. You can tell this was very painstakingly done. Yeah, you cut me in half and you see my smoke ring too. <laughs> can okay. you say that? I, guess I, I got, yeah, you can say that on television. Mm -hmm. fine. I got um, half and half. Mm. This is the, the, the juicy one, and it is. It's juicy. You know, we grew up saying, never speak with your mouth full. It's really hard to do when you're a food reviewer. <laughs> Now, the size. I know we're Texas, we're all about the meat. But you know what? The sides here are hands down. I'm not even through the meat yet. Oh man. <laughs> That's a but trip. you know what? We have a thing where we really like the food, and this is kind of unusual, I know, for barbecue. Oh, for this. Thank you. I break out my signature chopsticks. Uh-oh. Chopsticks at a barbecue place. Blasphemy, I know, right? But you'll never see me use these if I don't like the food. Got my little full cue here. What a cool shit. Isn't that neat? That is amazing. I'm eating the cream corn, by the way. Oh my god. How was the cream corn? Oh, dude. I'm about the corn, man. <laughs> about the corn. <laughs> John Redcorn, ladies and gentlemen. There's a hole in my pocket where my money should go. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a big old hole. Oh my God. Oh. Check him out. Look at them. They made a Korean barbecue now. Isn't that good? Oh. Look at that. I could sleep in this sauce. It's that good. Hit your head. Hit your right head. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now I'm getting down and dirty. Pork rib, folks. I dig on the swine. Wow. You are oh. trucking along. I, I'm having a hard time keeping up with him. Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> we got time to waste. <laughs> We're in the big leagues now. Yes, sir. Big league barbecue. I'm 53 years old, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Mmm. Mmm. I bet you Miss Piggy tastes like this. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I think Kermit might have some reservations about that. Oh, yeah, I got reservations. <laughs> See what that got us. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. Mm. All right, so. Oh my God. That's what I really like about this. It's cooked evenly all the way around. You got the beef rib. Which is hard to do. Oh, right on. You got pork? I got pork, yes sir. Oh, I see. Yep. So we're both digging on uh, two very different things and enjoying yes. it equally. We got clothes and hooves <laughs> at this table. <laughs> you have quite a way with words. Have anyone ever told you that? I think so. Oh. So you got that color, you've got that nice uh, char on the outside, and it's cooked on the side and on the inside perfectly. Now, we know barbecue in South Texas. It's just something that we do, and we have a billion places. If you drive from one block to the next, you'll find at least five or six barbecue restaurants before you even make it to a gas station. So for us to say that we like it, that's really saying a lot. Now, we are Valley Food Review, ladies and gentlemen. We are based out of South Texas, and this is the first ever travel edition 
first ever Travel Edition. We're so excited to have you here with us, and we are honored that you were able to join us. Uh, and what we want to do is bring our unique Valley Spoiled Palettes, is what we like to say, to expand it a little bit. And we're glad that we started here at B&B Smokehouse. This is definitely, if you're in San Antonio, don't leave San Antonio without coming and trying this place. Yes. What this young man just said. Yep. B&B Smokehouse. I grew up right down the street. Great family atmosphere. Great desserts. Great barbecue. Amen. South Side's about family. Come to the South Side, we we'll treat you like family. Uh -huh. Hold that thought because I do have a question about that. Sure. I've never had homemade green corn. Isn't that amazing? I've never had it before. It's amazing. It's, it's like a dessert. Yes. Yes, very much so. I have only had this from a can. Nope. Yep. Isn't that amazing? My whole life has been a lie. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Yep. It's like a liquid cupcake. When you cook the corn, the sugar, and the corn comes out. It's so good. Have y'all tried this? Have you tried? I've got my girls over there. Have y'all tried the cream corn? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Totally an accident. I didn't plan on the corn being my favorite thing since you were here. I told you, It man. just happened. They got the sides, <laughs> brother. They got the sides. Mmm. All right. Next item for me, potato salad. No, sir. I don't like it. I love it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Homemade. Yep. Mm. The staff here is amazing. You walk in, people smile at you. People in the kitchen look at you. They know who you are. They smile. They're happy. I mean, how can you not be happy when you're working in an establishment that has food like this? But, hey man, it wouldn't be food like this if it wasn't for the people in the kitchen. That's true. That's true. Like I said, we were greeted very warmly when we came in. This is comfort food. And uh, we've got, for example, backyard barbecues. That's a big thing in South Texas. And uh, we've got a, a barbecuer down there that just won our poll for best barbecue in South Texas, uh, Tigos Barbecue. They started with just an ice chest selling meat out of there, their small pit, and people liked what they were doing, so they kept doing it. It grew and it grew and it grew. At a certain point, what I noticed with barbecue places is once they get to a certain level, you lose all the heart, the soul, it starts becoming commercial, professional, and, you know, professional barbecue can mean a lot of things. It can mean commercial and ruined, or it can mean done well and cons consistently done well, as many of you will know. This place, still tastes like home cooking. You wouldn't normally think of leaving the house to get home cooking, but that's exactly my impression of B&B Smokehouse here in San Antonio. Feels like home cooking, except better, because I can't do this. <laughs> so you know what? We have a rating scale in uh, South Texas, and I think I know what you're gonna say already. Our scale is a noms rating scale. So we give one to five. How many noms would you give this place? Oh man, it's gotta be five, dude. Five. Five out of the park, man. <laughs> out of the park. I mean, they've renovated, rebuilt. It's new. It's beautiful. It's tasty. Why go anywhere else? Mm -hmm. In just a little bit, we'll give you some history on B and B Smokehouse. We'll find out who that mystery lady was mm -hmm. that told us how to order. You'll be surprised who she is. Yeah, I'm about to ask if they can adopt me. <laughs> So, now, we're really excited about you being here because we wanted to talk a little bit about, about your career and about your past, uh, but I wanted to start with this place. You said you've been coming here since you were a kid? I was a kid. It was called Howl's Barbecue. Howl's uh, Barbecue. Howl's Barbecue. Uh -huh. uh, my parents had a restaurant right down the street, so um, on the way home after work, before school, after work, whatever, uh, we would cruise by, take some food to go and go home and eat at home. So it was always a, a place in between my parents' restaurant and home. So it, it was in the neighborhood. I'm gonna keep eating while we talk. I hope yes, you don't mind. please do. <laughs> can we get can we get him a, a refill? If that would be all right. Please and thank you. Yes, please. Please and thank you. Barbecue, thank you. barbecue goes good with beer. Yes, it does. Michelob uh, Ultra, I'm watching my weight. <laughs> <laughs> watching it go up? Watching it go up. <laughs> so, um, what I want to know is, in the industry, 
I noticed that a lot of the roles that you've been cast in, I want to say you've been typecast. Well, no, you can't say I've been typecast. I, you can say I have been typecast. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's just, you know, the industry, I mean, and it's on a, I mean, is it a bad thing? Well, not when you work, mm -hmm. you know, but it just, it's just Hollywood. You would think that a place that has such uh, the ability of imagination would constrict themselves to typecasting. Right. I mean, you, when you see me, you, you see a certain image. And it's kind of hard in Hollywood, for whatever reason it may be, for them to, to, to stretch that, that, that vision of you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I've been typecast. Um, do I play the Indian guy? Yeah, I do. <laughs> am I on horseback? Yeah. You um, actually ride horses. Is yeah, that, yeah. Am I, did you learn that for filmmaking, or was that something that you did before? I've never learned how to ride a horse. I just rely on the horse to know what the hell he's doing. Oh, okay. So they didn't uh, have you, like, on a green saddle, and they just kind of... No. No, 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 no. No, I, I, sometimes I wish they had. I would have fallen off, you know? <laughs> this horse is named Tornado Insane. Yeah. For no particular reason. Little John, man. I had a horse one time called Little John. Little John? On Magnificent oh, big Seven. Horse? No, I didn't call him Little. No. Oh, yeah, I figured it was an ironic name. Oh, no, shit, no, man. This horse was big, man. <laughs> I didn't call him Little John. But no, but it, 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 stereotypical, yes. Good for my career, yes. Bad for my career, yes. Um, right now, the problem I'm having is I'm, I, I no longer play the young warrior. Oh. And I'm not quite old enough to, to play that wise, nor wise enough. Hollywood <laughs> age. To play that, 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 that the wise Native American. Yeah. So, so I'm at a, I'm at a, a bit of a, of, 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 a, of a turn point right now. Oh, I think I lost an onion ring. Uh, oh, an onion ring or an onion ring? Oh. Oh, there they are. Uh, you know, we were talking about that a little while ago. And that's, that's a really good point. In Hollywood, if you're playing 30 to 50, you got to be 20 to 30, right. 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 right? That's the way. I mean, look at the kids from 90210. That was a good example of it. Yes, they were 18 for 20 years. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of think. I'm doing an audition after this, <laughs> mm. and the and the demographics was between 30 and 50. Uh -huh. I'm 53, so I'm way at the end of that spectrum. So, do I have a lot of hope for this audition? Um, not really. But am I still going to give the best I can do? No, that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Right. It's, do the best you can do. And that's why your IMDb list is longer than mine. <laughs> well, it, but it, there's a point to where it kind of stopped a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, I, I've been lucky to work, lucky enough to be in the industry. Um, I've worked with some great people, um, worked on some great shows. Um, sooner or later, one of these damn shows that I worked on has to come back. I mean, everything mm -hmm. else is coming back. Mm, Parks and Recreation. Yeah, I, I would love to see Parks and Rec come back. I would love to see Ken Hotote come back. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's well, there's a fine example. That's a good example, actually, of, of a stereotypical character. But you put your own spin on it. I know right. you did. Yes, because he was he was such a good guy. I mean, again, you're beginning to see the the, the Native American casino owner, mm -hmm. you know, um, or the casino head. So that's something that's evolved in my time period. Mm -hmm. Which I think I think Kenneth Hote, you know, may have been one of the first out there on, on, on in a basis where you could see this nice, fun, lighthearted character. You had mentioned during a previous interview, I think, that it was only recently in your career that you were able to wear a nice suit. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, before it was just leggings, a loincloth, uh -huh. sometimes shoes, and then every once in a uh, while I get a job where I get to wear pants. Kicking, uh, kicking, kicking, kicking wolf, kicking, kicking wolf. Yeah. On Lonesome Love right. series. Yes. Great show. Oh, you look badass in that. Though, that dude. was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was I was awesome. young. I was young. <laughs> oh, and and Denali, by the way, I remember watching that, thinking I'd hate to run into this guy in a dark alley, and we're going to meet him. <laughs> it was fun show, man. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, how can it? How could it not have been a good show? I mean, you're working with Denzel Washington, you know, uh, uh, Chris Pratt. Yeah, that, oh my gosh, okay, so many questions, so much to cover. I hope we have time to, to hit on the, the, the heart of it all, uh, but I still want to go over a few of the, the yes. film appearances. I know you probably get tired of talking. No, no, I love talking no. to you. Thank you, please. All right, I appreciate it. Um, of all the roles that you've had, which one would you say is your favorite? Two of them. You take them back to the young Uncle Ray and the old Walker, Texas Ranger. Mm -hmm. I know it was a goofy, goofy, goofy show, but I really like the familyness. Of, of the young Uncle Ray from the Walker Texas Rangers series, mm -hmm. which was early in my career. And of course, then if you go late in my career, I'd have to say Ken Otote. I loved it. He was funny. Um, he was respected. He was needed by, 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 by the city, mm -hmm. the Pawnee. Um, I mean, I, and the show kept going. I would, I actually foresaw, you know, him running for mayor of Pawnee. Yep. 
And you know what? He was he was really really intelligent. The character was written very intelligent. Yes. I'd have to say that if he wasn't playing, and you know, we got to say it, the Native American card, he'd be playing whatever other card he had at his disposal. Yes. He was using all of his resources to get ahead. Yes. And that's what made him intelligent. Made yes. him go getter, and nobody could ever get him down. So yeah, yeah. I really like that character. That's great. But he wouldn't have been the same if you hadn't been the one playing him. It was those little looks, the cast off to the side when you made the joke, the wink to the other coworker sitting at the table going, yeah, you know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing, but they don't know what I'm doing. Right. That's the kind of stuff that you bring your own personal flavor to well, that you. only works when you do. Well, thank you. I mean, that's again, that's a Greg Daniels creation. Greg Daniel was uh, one of the co-creators of King of the Hill. Ah. So, oh, yeah. I've seen him in the right. credits. Yes. Uh -huh. So, uh, remember uh, The Simpsons? Yeah. Remember uh, Bart's? No, never heard of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> remember that time you wrote that song, The Beatles? I'm so stupid. <laughs> um, but, uh, what was that? Anyway, um, damn it, that made me lose my mind now, brother. Oh. The co creators oh, of yeah. Uh, yeah. Greg Daniels, remember Bart's best friend with the round glasses? Millhouse. Millie. Mm -hmm. That's Millhouse, Greg yeah. Daniels. Millhouse. Oh, That's Greg okay. Daniels. I mean, he looks, I mean, in a good way. Mm -hmm. I don't want to piss off the producer. I mean that in a good way. <laughs> yeah. You know, you look like Millhouse in a very smart, good way. So, to be on Parks and Recreation, mm -hmm. being a Greg Daniels project, a high honor, man. A high honor. Because I, I, I think that somewhere in that character was John Redcorn. Somewhere in Ken's GNA, you know, was that John Redcorn. Um, who was dying to, to get out of, of, of his uh, rut, you know, with Nancy and breaking up with Nancy and a bit living in Ireland. It's like a second life, I think, for John Redcorn. So it was an honor and a, a, a privilege and a whole hell of a lot of fun to play Kenneth So, I need to know, to me, to everyone, you are John Redcorn. That's yes. the way the world sees you, right? Yeah. What? Thank you. Um, well, I mean, Why, thank you. The fans of the show see you anyway. Yes, yes, not the world, but cheers to my fans. So you get. So, um, you weren't the first John Redcorn. No, season one. Yes. Yeah. Great actor had an amazing credit himself. Was oh, in yeah, a man. car accident. Yeah. When he was just before his 40th birthday, I believe. Right. Yes. Did you know him? Yeah, man. Um, yes, I did. It's a very, very little-known fact, actually. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, know him so well, I can't remember his name right now. It just kind of caught me off guard there. Uh, yeah, I, Victor uh, Aaron, man. I mean, it just it's Victor just, Aaron. That's right. Yeah. The reason I forget his name is because sometimes I forget that he's not even around, dude. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, it was so long ago too. It was great what, guy. Um, got the job. Yeah. What was it like taking over in, in circumstances like that? Um, it, it's just you just carry on. I mean, every time. I mean, I owe my life to, to a brother that's no longer here. Um, I owe my life to a cartoon written by a bunch of white folks. <laughs> um, what I think makes for me the John Redcorn character is knowing that Victor, you know, he lost his life while being that character. And in this industry, nothing ever dies, <clears throat> man. You're always on rerun. You're always somewhere. Yeah. So for me to be able to carry on his legacy, um, there were big shoes to feel, man. Big, big shoes to, to fill. I mean, the man was six. Well, you did six. it. I mean, I don't think anybody yeah. could have could have have really embodied that character and done him justice the way you did. Well, thank you. I mean, I know Victor has some great children out there, and I want to say uh, no, a day doesn't go by that I don't think of your dad. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, cheers to him. Cheers I to lose. time because we're all susceptible time. to it. That's there the way we go. It is. Uh, speaking of time, almost heroes. Almost Heroes, Chris Farley. Yes, okay, everybody asks, what? I know. What? what? What was it like working with you? you got to ask that question. Chris, it's funny. It's almost just spilling out of my mouth there. What was it like? Chris was funny. Chris was sober at the time. Um, no way. Yes. I thought he was just born with hearing. <clears throat> no, he was just sober. Guy. He was sober. <laughs> yeah. um, and I know this for the fact that I got in trouble. We were heading back to the hotel in, in Redding, California, mm -hmm. and Chris calls me over. Hey, come here. I'm like, yeah, Chris, what can I do for you? He goes, can you go get me some candy bars? I'm like, excuse me? Can you go get me some candy bars? I said, sure, Chris, whatever you need me to do. I said, where do I go? He said, they have them at the bar. Go to the bar, get me two Snicker bars. I was like, okay. So I go to the bar. At the time, I was drinking vodka and cranberry juice. And I remember, I said, I need two vodka and cranberry, two vodka and cranberry juice and two Snicker bars. Bartender's doing his thing. I get the two drinks. 
all of a sudden I hear this voice. Isn't it good, man? Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I hear the. I'm listening, but yes, I, I, I hear the Hollywood. I hear the Hollywood voice. You know, the, from coming from the sky. What the hell do you think you're doing? And I turn around, like what? And there's this man there. He goes, Chris can't have anything to drink. I, I'm not buying Chris anything to drink. <laughs> he goes, you got two drinks right there. I'm like Native American, you know. I get my drinks two at a time, man. You never know when you're gonna kick us out of a bar. <coughs> He's like, what? I said, yeah, I'm getting my drinks two at a time. He goes, oh, okay. And about that time, the poor bartender puts down two sticker bars. And he goes, the sticker bars. Who are the sticker bars for? I said, well, the sticker bars are for Chris. And he's like, Chris can't have sticker bars either. I'm like, oh, yes. So somewhere in what was going on, he wasn't allowed to drink. He wasn't allowed to, I don't know what it was, but I got reprimanded yeah. for, for trying to get Chris Farley uh, sticker bars. <laughs> So there I am stuck That's with an amazing two, story. Dude, I don't even eat sticker bars. Not now I do, but then I did. Yeah. Now I do. Because I had those damn two sticker bars and those two drinks, so I'm drinking, eating sticker bars, taking a Chris Farley. <laughs> very, very nice man. Uh, I remember coming out in my full regalia. If you remember, I had the big, beautiful uh, headdress. Dude, yeah. vent twig. Well, you weren't, you weren't quite right in the head. <laughs> oh, dude, it wasn't right in the head. Well, yeah. And you got to slap him, too. And, oh. Uh, and uh, uh, Matthew uh, Matthew Perry, Matthew, Matthew Perry, yeah, yeah. oh, <laughs> just slapping oh. each other back and forth. The, the, that must the have story, been, how many no, times no. did you have to do that, Jake? We we did it. We only did it like three times because I hit both of them. I snapped both their noses. I caught Chris Farley's nose. I made it pop. No, uh, I was surprised Matt, how much taller than Chris yes, Farley you were. Yes, actually. yes, you look huge in front of him. Yes, I was. He's huge. not a he's not an easy guy. No, to he, no, he wasn't. He yeah. wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> Matthew, I actually hit the tip of the nose and made it pop. And it goes all the way back to the audition with uh, Christopher Guest. I go to the audition. It's the last minute audition. I don't know who Christopher Guest is. Well, this man is sitting behind the register, behind the register, behind the office desk. I walk in. The guy tells me, "You must be here for the audition for the Native American." And I'm like, "No shit. You must be a genius." <laughs> this person leaves, and here comes a lady. So no, in Hollywood, I mean, I I'm here to women, play the elephant. Right. Exactly. So this lady comes out from an office and I'm thinking oh it's a woman she's the boss you know where I come from a woman's always the boss so yep. I assume she's the boss that is. so I'm like hello ma'am yes my name's Jonathan Joss and I'm here for the audition of Bent Twig she's like oh okay I'll sit down she sits down and about that time I realized she's the secretary she said Chris will see you in a minute or Mr. You know, Guest will see you in a minute yeah. so sure enough she said you may go in the office I open the door and there's Christopher Guest the guy that I talk shit to uh-huh. at the reception desk and I'm like oh my god this is you know this is the man, yeah. you know. I know that because I think there's a nameplate that's in Christian or something. So, that's a big clue. So I don't say a word. If you know, you know, Ben Twig has no words. Yeah. So I walk in and I sit down, and about this time he kind of motions me to stand up, and I I stand up, and he starts telling me the trick to slapstick, mm-hmm. how it's all about timing, how it's not about words, how it's about rhythm and beats and while he's doing this he's getting up from his desk walking around the desk giving the lines you know up to my cue mm-hmm. you know we come in peace beat slap yeah. he comes and I'm standing he comes up he's a fairly decent sized man and he stops and says I come in peace I slapped that son of a gun across the face. I mean, I mean, you want bam. to be the best you you can be. Oh my God! <laughs> when I caught him. You could see like little fingerprints on his little white pasty skin. <laughs> you know, boom! <laughs> and he kind of looks, and the slap got him to where he kind of did the circle. And as he's walking, he's saying, "Now, Jonathan, you need to understand that acting is acting. Acting is not doing. Acting." Is pretending to do. Is pretending. Yeah. <laughs> At that time, I'm not saying a word. I'm there. Christopher Guest sits down, looks back up. I'm still. Tells me, "Thank you very much for coming. You may leave." By the way, if you don't know, take a look at Bent Twig. Yes. Everything he has on with the. The headdress and all that, and you'll understand why him just standing there is enough of a statement. Yes. <laughs> so I leave, I go out the door, and of course I'm like, you stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, what are you doing? I get to my friend's apartment, I hear the phone ringing. This is before cell phones, or mm-hmm. before I had a cell phone. I hear the, the phone ringing, I run upstairs, it's my agent. They're like, they want you for the job. 
what did you do to get you? I said, dude, you don't even want to know what I did. So, how dare you be real in Hollywood? Yes. So, two days later, we're on a Learjet flying to, to, to Redding, whatever, California. And of course, Chris Farley taps me on the shoulder. And his thing is, what was it like to finally slap a director? I've wanted to slap a director for my life. And I'm just, I had to deny it. I was just like, I don't know what you're talking about. No idea. It wasn't there. Someone yeah. else. Yeah. And uh, another six foot tall Native American guy. Yeah. So <laughs> during that scene, production, uh, the stuntman comes and says, listen, Jonathan, you are not allowed to touch the actors. Do not touch the actors. <laughs> I'll be goddamn if I didn't catch both of them. I mean, just on the little tip of their noses. Just the tip. And it works beautiful. When you see it, it's right on, man. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris Farley. Amazing well, they have the sound effect later, and they do the camera angle properly, and it's just a, oh, looks like you're just getting hit by a Mack truck. But, oh, man, great. Yeah. It's great. Movie magic. You gotta love yes, it. Yes, movie magic. But no, Chris Farley, great guy to work with, a lot of fun. Um, miss him, too. Rest right on, peace, Chris. Chris. Damn, all these people I've been working with are dying or dead. Yeah, well, hey. It's, it's gonna happen. We're there, too. So... <clears throat> I kind of got to switch topics a little bit sure. to a, a more somber category. Yes, sir. Now, um, not without going into Illuminati exposés or anything like that, but the evils of Hollywood. Or maybe not just the evils of Hollywood, but the the reality, I want to say, yes. of Hollywood. Yes. So, a lot of our viewers out there will be looking at a celebrity walking down the street and think, they've got it made, right? Uh, the world is at their fingertips because they were in a movie or they were in a scene or something like that. But we're here to tell you right now that that's not the reality. We've got some insight on that, I believe. I believe you had uh, something to say about that, Yeah, right? man. Um, follow your dreams. Um, dreams don't always mean you're going to be working. You know, um, as a young kid, there's two things I wanted. I wanted to be an actor, yeah. and I wanted to, to have a Porsche. Well, it's a good dream. Great dream. I got that dream. Except, all right, listen to this. This is a trick. Be specific. Be specific in your dreaming, in your word placement. Because guess what? I am an actor. Yes. And I do have a Porsche. Mm -hmm. My Porsche has been broken down for 11 years. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't feel the laugh. All right. <laughs> and I probably haven't had a real working acting job in like three years. Three years? Since Magnificent Seven. No. Yes. That was your last acting job. No, I'm at other act, small acting job, uh -huh. but not to that uh, that uh, that. Oh, um. you know what? That is a crime. No, that but is but, a but, crime. but but am I still an actor? Do I still have that Porsche? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, so in the industry, you may think things look great, mm -hmm. but dude, we're all like ducks, and under the water, we're doing this. You know, um, but things happen. Relationships break up. Jobs go away, people die. I mean, it's all part of life. Yeah. And, and I, I'm here to say, you know what? Mm. Well, like this beautiful restaurant. I mean, it has grown. Love it it was a little, like, little shack. Now it's huge. And when you tear down, you're going to lose some of those memories. When those people pass away, you're going to lose some of those that insight. But at the end of the day, man, it's just, I think we're all struggling. Whether you've got a million dollars in the bank or whether you got $2.75 in the bank. We're all kind of struggling. We're all trying to make our dreams come true. So yeah. just because you think something's doing cool for somebody, assume that they're in the same boat that we're in. Yeah. Um, so doing this makes me feel better. It, 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 I want to tell my fans that I, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to make more movies. I'm trying to be funny again. But here lately, it's been difficult. And it's because of my fans. It's because of people like you that call me up and say, hey, let's do an interview. Yeah. Uh, what can we do? Uh, you know, I, I sell my spices, you know, out, out of the backseat of my car. Yeah, this is actually, and we're taking some of these home. Yes, I yes, hope you don't mind. yes. This is a King of the Grill rub -all. And this this blend was made, uh, handed down family from your family, Well, it, right? it, it's like, based out of here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh -huh. uh, it's, 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 it's a local flavor. It's a local, a local, a local item. So, yes, local Let me tell you grape. exactly what's in it so you can make it at home. No, yes, I'm, I'm exactly. Just I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we, just, we tell you what's in it, we just don't tell you what it's about. Secret ingredient soup. Yeah, so it's, it's stuff like this that, that makes the acting career so much better. Something that when you're down and out or things aren't going for you, 
your yeah. town lifts you up. Again, Southside San Antonio, full of family. San Antonio, full of family, man. So don't don't be afraid to tell somebody things aren't going that great for you. And you know, I have to say, I was honestly surprised about how ex accessible you were, I suppose, that you were yes. willing to talk to somebody from South Texas that you had never met. Accessible. Um, Does I mean, that mean easy? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm that too. <laughs> well, not unless you wanted to. No, I, no, I was kidding. But, uh, I mean, we okay, we had been online friends for a little while, talking back and forth, that kind of stuff. Just, uh, But I don't know you. What does it feel like? I mean, I feel like I know you better now. I definitely I do. You broke and, bread, man. And I'd be honored to call you friend. Thank you. But what does it feel like walking through a world where everybody feels like they know you just because they've seen you from a certain place? Does that get old or is it flattering? No, man. What's the emotion? I love it. You love it? I love it. I love it because I give away an autograph a day. Hmm. It's not so because somebody asked me for it. because I, I give it. Hey, excuse me. Would you like my autograph? That's awesome. Excuse me. Would you like my autograph? Do you know who I am? Um, <laughs> I heard you say, if you don't know who I am, within two minutes, within I'll tell you. Within two minutes, I'm going to tell you who I am. If you're not asking who I am, I'm going to tell you who I am. And it's not yeah. so much that, it, well, it is. It's my ego. Um, hey, you know, but, that, that's no lie. We, we walked in here, and he walked around to the tables, everybody looking at, oh, who's this guy? And he walked up to him and said, hi, how you doing? I'm how are you doing? I'm Jonathan Josh. Yeah, totally just friendly. I'm glad to meet you. Friendly guy. That's why I was so uh, shocked. That's because, something very rare, I want to say, in Hollywood today. Well, because I know King of the Hill is a piece of America, man. It it's a is. piece. It's iconic. I have that stuff on rerun at home. And people will go, I don't know who you are. And then when you finally... And you, you kind of enlighten their day. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And they don't think it's, it's possible. I mean, fine example. <clears throat> Restaurant down the street. I went to get food the other day. Food was horrible. <laughs> I'm we sorry. Won't, we won't say any names. <laughs> <laughs> the food was horrible. So, so I had to go back. here or on the street, yes. then come here, not anywhere yes. else. So I went back, and I told the guy, listen, the food was horrible. He's like, well, do you have your receipt? I said, no, I don't have my receipt. Then I figured out, well, number one, you guys don't give me a receipt. Yes, isn't that good? Mm -hmm. What was great was I said, listen, why would I come in off the street, say your food was horrible, I mean, I don't look like I'm somebody that needs to get free food, even though I love free food. But the <laughs> point, no. the free point food. is this. The guy says, listen, I mean, no offense, but I don't know who you are, so I can't say that you were here for sure. I said, I, 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 I. you know who I am, brother. <laughs> you know who I am. <laughs> and he tells me. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? And he tells me, no, I don't know who you are. I go, yes, you do. I go, dude, do you watch King of the Hill? And he tell me, oh, man, I watch that show all the time. I've been watching this since I was a kid, man. I love that show. You did the voice. And I said, I'm John Redcorn. And he says, no, you're not. I said, what? First, you're not going to believe that I came here and got the worst menudo I've ever gotten in my life. Second, now you're going to tell me I'm not John Redcorn. Who goes around pretending they're John I, Redcorn? I said, who the hell would lie about that? It's, kind of a, it's a random thing to say. Yes. So, of course, I take out the phone. Who is the voice of John Redcorn? <laughs> the voice of John Redcorn you is Jonathan Joss. No, 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 man. No, pull out YouTube it, man. Google it. I Google it to the guy, and the guy goes, oh, yeah, I do know who you are. I said, so does that mean, like, you're replacing my Manulo next time I come in? So, yeah, I got a free Manulo. I mean, wow. why do you go to a restaurant that's bad? But it, it had, yeah. it had, they just needed to cook it for, like, another hour. Yeah. You know? So, but it's amazing. You know, that's important. That's part of the reason why we do what we do, because... Your money is valuable. We don't want you to waste it. No, no, of course. No. So of course. If we find some place delicious, we want you to try it. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah. Absolutely. That's but why it, food reviews are important. It's a great thing. I mean, my, my, my relationship that I no longer have, they couldn't stand it. It's like, no, dude, you can't go anywhere without somebody recognizing you. Yeah. Or even worse, I can't go anywhere with you without you telling somebody who you are. That's That should be a, a point of support, I would think. Like, well, it's a good thing. No, it can be annoying. Me. Well. It can be annoying. I can yeah, understand that. But I mean, if you're... If your aim is success in the business, that's kind of part of the territory, right? Well, yeah, Quick I just, pro. you know, sometimes when you're down and out, you know, you, you want to, like, enlighten someone's day. And I know that John Redcorn um, and the other characters that I've played can, can bring people out of a rut. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, especially King of the Hill, man. I mean, yeah. people love the show. It's iconic. Um, yeah. You're, that's who I am. Well, you're, you're more than just the sum of your parts. And by parts, I mean the parts you accept in Hollywood. 
I think that you're a great person just for who you are. Thank you. And I think that that shines through in the parts that you play. Thank you. Definitely. Anybody who's really looking and not just staring at the screen going, duh, can say, you know what, this guy's a great actor and he's a good person as well. You know, it's, 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 it's a heavy weight, man. When you're playing characters that are mean and ruthless like the and evil. But you said you enjoyed playing Denali. Oh, yeah, man. What part of it did you enjoy? That he was working for a white guy. Yeah. Um, that there was all white people, for example, in the movie, if you notice, when Bogue tells Denali, uh -huh. get me the meanest people you know. Get me the gang. Yeah, yeah. And if you notice that first shot where Denali's on the horse and there's, 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 there's uh, Mr. Bogue, is they that, do a long shot. Is that the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, this shot right here? That's that shot right there. And they do the long shot. If you notice, everybody's white. Denali went and recruited every white, mean white person oh, he knew. Oh, I didn't because think about that. Yes, yes, because he says, get me the meanest. meanest. You know what? Nothing worked more worthless to, in Denali's world, in Denali's world than white people. I hadn't seen it you that know, I It's not a personal thing now. That was right over my head. Yeah, yeah. So that, well, that, for the yeah. character. For the yeah. character. And right. if you notice, he... he, he you, you really got into the character. Dude, that, why not? I mean, it's so, the biggest yeah. show of my life. Uh -huh. I'm working with great director. I mean, but it, it was our responsibility. People would ask us, what kind of character are we? I mean, uh -huh. he's an Apache scout. He was trained killer. He was trained to go against his own people. But, and you're actually a White Mountain Apache, right? Uh, there's a blood lineage there uh -huh. and, and, and through the... Yeah, and Bah 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 yeah, yeah, there's the blood lineage there. Was there any kind of a connection to the character because of that lineage? No, not so much. Not really, no? Okay. Not so much is that the character was trained. Um, he was a military guy, and he took that darkness and ended up working for the white folks. The people that, that brought him to his knees, the people that brought him to go against his own people. So he sided with those people to attack the good people. Mm -hmm. I mean, how bad can bad be? How evil can evil be mm -hmm. when you end up siding with those people that that, that, that cause Good you point. the most harm? Good point. Much so was this statement that I didn't so, so was this guy dark? Was he mean? Um, to a degree. Was he ready to die? <laughs> yes. I mean, think about it. At the end, to get killed by a skinny little Indian? That was it. Uh, what was it like being thrown off of that balcony? By the way? It wasn't me. I was going to say, did no, you do your own stunts? No, no, no. Jackie Chan? Yeah. No. <laughs> no way. I don't want no chance to fall <laughs> two, 20, 40 feet. No, hey, man. you got to respect those Hollywood stuntmen. That guy, uh, uh, he'd been my stuntman on two or three other films. Ah, okay. So it's real important that we have people yeah. that make us, you know. You've got yeah. your people there to. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. I mean, I come with a stuntman. It, and it's not so much, it's, that's their job. My job yeah. is not to make a fall. Right. Everybody has their job. I mean, for me to say, oh, yeah, I can do this, I'll do it. Yeah. Why risk it? That's true. I mean, because... It'd be hard doing the next scene if he's you a native. I'm, when I work, I have a native stuntman. Yeah. I make sure that we, we, we keep it within the house, and we make sure it looks good. You know, I really respect that. Um, your support of the native culture. Um, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's a culture. It's, it's, I mean, a lot of people don't believe that, that, that real Indians are still alive. People you know, believe that, that we're something from the past. Because they don't, they don't wear the romanticized version of what people see a Native American to be. Not walking around with feathers and and right. Uh, it's bones not what's depicted. Well, that's depicted in Hollywood. I mean, right. every image that you see, yeah. every job I've gotten, like you said, it's been a stereotypical. But yep. it's when you walk away from that camera. It's what you bring to that character. Is he a ruthless character? Why is he a ruthless character? Yeah. Why? I mean, it's like Geronimo. Would, would this do is um, uh, method acting. Any, right? but yeah, would be any character. Having to understand the character. Understand what they got. I mean, yeah. Geronimo did what he did when he would mutilate a body. Uh -huh. People would. I mean, the last. I mean, his name wasn't even Geronimo. It was Saint Geronimo. Because before you were you were killed by this native individual, you uh, uh, you would cry out to Saint Geronimo to please protect me, take my spirit, please protect me from this mass force. So when Geronimo would do something, he wanted you to see his pain. When you looked upon his kill, when you looked upon the savagery that that, that he portrayed or put on to uh, to a kill. He wanted to see, this is a pain that I've had. I've had my wives killed. I've had my children killed. I've had my land taken. So much about the ruthlessness of a people that are so peaceful is that you brought it out in them. And you say you can't play the wise old man. You're making observations about things that most people wouldn't even ex like see. You realize that, right? Yeah, I that, thought it was a beer in the onion rings. Well, that's possible. You know, better when I'm drunk. Dude, yeah. the onion rings are even better, man. But that's, a very, cold? Wow. that's a very deep way of thinking. That's what I'm saying. That's a very, very poignant observation that you just made. That's that's incredible. Well, 
to really know a character. And there was something to do with the, uh, you had a, a belt with your character that you had asked to replace to, what was on it? The, the stop locks. Yeah, you had yeah. a specific request for that. Right? Yeah, um, if you notice, he has all these scalps. <clears throat> and everyone was like, oh, you, you're, you're a scalp hunter. Mm -hmm. No, D'Onofrio character was the scalp hunter. Right. When they hired D'Onofrio's character, they tell him, you know what, they're not giving money for scalps anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, what Donani has is actually is his family. Those scalps are his family. Oh, that's right. Yeah, those scalps are, are, are <clears throat> he more than likely killed whoever scalped his family. Yeah. And those were representational. Are... That was the darkness that he was carrying with him. Yeah. You know, so I mean, you see that one of the wow. scalps is kind of blondish, wow. kind of white, mm -hmm. not dark. Yeah. Was he married to a non-native woman? You know, was that one was, of his that wives was another thing you brought to the character, right? Yeah. He wanted that kind of uh, the, yeah. the in-depth story about every little yeah. aspect of the because character. Because it's important. I mean, I'm just not a ruthless person. I'm just not. I mean, people just don't go out. I mean, if you're psychotic, yes. Yeah. But even then, there's a root of why you're doing what you're doing. And I think it's important that when you do these native characters or you do these evil characters, that you understand why. Yeah. You know, it's like. Otherwise, you come off looking like Doctor Evil. Right. It's like being. It's like being. Yeah. It's like being a, yeah, like being a, 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 a Cuban drug lord. I mean, or or or, or, or black crack dealer. Mm -hmm. It's like, why are they doing what they're doing? Yeah. They're doing it for family. They're doing it to, because that's the only thing they know how to do. Right. You know, or what are the uh, events that led up to correct to them correct. being where they're at? And I think if I can do that in a character. Um, and then also in between the character, break away and talk to these actors, talk to the group, talk to the crew. They can understand where we come from, you know. And again, to be able to take such a darkness <clears throat> from a people that were put on this planet to be caretakers, you really had to do something wrong yeah. to bring that darkness out. So that's that's my homage wow. to, to where I come from. Wow, that is yeah. awesome. That is awesome and major insight into that character. But thank you. But you know, um, for anybody out there aspiring to be actors, I would say, uh, like I said, I'm not a professional, but I'm just learning from what he's told me. If you're going to do something, do it all the way. Yeah, I think man. that's a good takeaway from this, right? Yes. Don't do anything halfway. Uh, go all in. Do your research. Do your homework. Know your character. I learned to identify with your character. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of method actors have kind of gone loony from going too far in that direction, right? You're, you're a fine, healthy individual like me. He's totally sane, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. So anyway. <laughs> so, um, okay. Matt, I've had the best time, the absolute best time here talking with you. Oh, man. Uh, is there anything that you would like to tell to the audience, to any fans that may be watching this, people that are... Maybe watch this two, three years from now, because this will be up forever, like you said. Camera, Hollywood. There's two things. This First thing is, we got dessert over there, so if you could pass the dessert, that's over there. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Remember we were talking about that movie magic? Look at this. Poof. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Um, How did I not see that? I don't have anything to say to directly to anyone, but directly to the world. Uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, South Texas. Thanks for being a King of the Hill fan. Um, thanks for recognizing me. Thanks for allowing me to introduce myself to you over and over again. Um, thank you to B&B Smokehouse. Thank you to you guys for, for a beautiful interview. And um, follow your dreams. Be strong. And um, don't forget the dessert. <laughs> I like that. I don't think this is going to be as good as the... Uh, apple dessert that I had last night but I think I'm going to do it anyway but that doesn't mean that it's just delicious oh oh my god mm. oh my god oh yeah oh man it's pretty goddamn close to last night I think the company made it better. Oh Never getting God. a Whataburger apple pie again. Oh my God. No offense, I love Whataburger, but get oh my pie here. goodness. We're going to drive up to San Antonio just for the pies. Mm. By the way, those of you who know me at Valley Food Review know I will never, ever 
shamelessly plug the place. I will never say anything is not true. I won't pretend to like something if I don't. Oh. We are very, very, very picky about that oh sort of God. thing. Oh. What is this? Oh, I have no idea. We got an apple thing here. It's pineapple. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Mm. It's like cake. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh. A little diabetes. A little diabetes. I'll take it. Well, thanks again for everything, brother. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you for watching the special travel edition of Valley Food Review. Stay tuned, though, because we're going to get some history on the place. We're going to show you around, and we really hope you uh, stop by at B&B Smokehouse in San Antonio, Texas. Enjoy the show. Peace out, guys. There's a hole in my belly, but I'm going to keep on eating. It's so good, man. Okay, guys, I'm here with Cheryl Finley, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the history of B&B Smokehouse. Okay. Well, our dad started the original restaurant here in 1958, and it was called Howe's Drive-In, where he sold hamburgers and hot dogs, a little bit of barbecue. And then in 1984, my brother Bruce took it over and made it into B&B Smokehouse. That's B&B for Bruce and Becky Bruce Finley. Bruce and Becky Finley. This yes. was 1984? 1984. Oh, okay. He turned it into this this one. This was 1984? This was 1984. Ah, okay. That one was 1958. The house Drive-In. The house Drive-In, right. yes. So, um, you ate here today. Did yes, you like it? we did. Okay, so y'all just saw us trying the food. Uh, this place is endorsed by the one and only Jonathan Joss. He's the one who recommended the place to us. You might know him as the voice of uh, John Redcorn, of course, from King of the Hill, Denali. and I mean, you, you guys saw it, and he loved the food. So that to us was a big enough reason to come out and try the place for ourselves. Now we are Valley Food Review. This is the first travel edition. This is the first place we wanted to leave the valley and try because we wanted to bring our unique palette of barbecue to San Antonio and test it, so to speak. And it passed with flying colors. This place is amazing. Now, uh, I want to know what your favorite item on the menu is. What would you say if you could only eat one thing here that it would be? Oh, only one thing. That's slightly ah, different. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Slightly different. Well, Okay, I would have to have the brisket chicken. Brisket? <laughs> brisket chicken. Brisket That's chicken. Brisket and chicken. I can't do oh, one thing. It's like a two meat plate, brisket and a chicken. Brisket and chicken. And since I have the two, then I'll go with the potato salad and cream corn. Okay. Homemade here. Brisket, chicken, potato salad, cream corn. You know, I, I got almost that same thing, actually. And I'm very happy that I did. But I also got the beef ribs. And the that beef was really ribs good. are fabulous. They're, they're giant, big ribs and they're also very very tender can't go wrong with those. i feel like everything at this place is made and this is an observation i made when i was eating made with love yes home cooking yes is what it tasted like we were talking about barbecue places getting too commercial y'all have yes. clearly grown quite a bit over the years yet i don't feel that this place has even come close to losing that that homemade uh down-to-earth taste and that's what i hear from all of our customers they tell me day after day that they are so happy that everything tastes the same and the prices are the same. Yeah. Speaking of They're tasting the same. Yes. Yeah. You know, okay, first of all, I'm glad we got in before the lunch rush because I don't know if y'all can maybe hear over my shoulder, this place is packed. And I mean, it was it was crowded enough when we got in here. Now there's no place to sit, literally. And I think if you well, have a lot of... fine places to sit. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, people are sitting <laughs> with each other and all kinds of stuff. I saw that in there, actually. But if you go to a place and there's plenty of room to sit, you're in the wrong place. It looks like y'all might need to expand again, right? That's what I hear all the time, but I'll leave that up to Bruce to see what he says. Well, if y'all want to open up in South Texas, you know, I know. we'll be there. Uh, but speaking of things tasting the same, there was a... Okay, the internet was up in arms. Uh, when y'all had closed down and reopened because there was a favorite item on the menu that y'all no longer served and that was the burgers yes but we've got news for them right yes the burgers are back burgers are back <laughs> yeah. technically I guess they never left but you have to ask for them off menu yes they're not on the written menu mm -hmm. just ask for it and not just the hamburgers but the cheeseburgers the uh, brisket burgers with bacon everything the brisket burger oh my gosh okay so they gave us one of those right after we uh, we finished our meal so that we could try it we could we could uh, uh, look at it and to me 
presentation alone, let's start there. It is one of the most beautiful sandwiches I've ever seen. I mean, the ingredients were just cascading down the side. The bun was nice and shiny. It looked like it had been cooked uh, griddle top, grill top. Uh, it was uh, crisp on the outside, soft on the inside, and I was mentioning one of my big things about burgers is that the bread has to be just as good as the ingredients you put in it or you're kind of taken away from it. Yes. That's an important Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And I felt that there was a perfect balance of ingredient and bread on this one. Yes. A lot of people, they'll say, you know what, let's throw five or six different patties in there so that we can, oh, have the meat monster, but that's not really a balance of ingredients. No, no. Yeah. This is the, this, it, this is perfect. Yes. It's, <laughs> and they're back. It's so, a beautiful uh, sandwich. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, absolutely, and absolutely wonderful. everything is homemade in the kitchen, and um, that's why people just keep coming back. They love it. That's right. Everything y'all make here is made fresh here, Yes. right? Yes. The cream corn, potato salad. Yes, with the secret ingredients. And I had never had fresh creamed corn. I realized mm. I'd only had it from a can. Yes. And I'm a value food reviewer. Same. I'm a food reviewer, so that's saying a lot. I feel like I've Not been living under same. a rock my entire life. But you know what? The further we travel, the more we go the more we're going to experience those unique tastes that you need to experience for yourself. And if you've never had fresh made cream corn, I recommend your first time be here at B&B Smokehouse. Absolutely. So is there anything else you'd like to add about B&B Smokehouse? I think that one thing I would like to say, and I'm sure Bruce would, is that our parents would be thrilled. They both passed away about five years ago and had no idea that Bruce was doing this. Oh, and we sorry. have photos of them on the walls and uh, way before um, they even thought of opening a place. So they didn't get to see the success of this place? They never got to see this place. Now this one was always successful. And housed. But it was, and housed, but oh. it was too small. So right. this, this, is, this is the new improved B&B in a big way. Well, I absolutely love what you guys are doing here. And from us at Valley Food Review to you, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. For we coming. really had a great time thank and you. we will I be back. I enjoyed it too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you for watching Valley Food Review. We'll see you next time. Keep eating.